Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to another episode of our Aquarium Online Academy. My name is James. It's time for Aquarium Live. Now, we are joined in the studio here with Dana on the computer, and Emily is helping answer some of the questions that you have. You can text in questions to us right here at 562-286-1838. Remember, texting rates do apply. If you're one of our younger viewers, make sure you have permission to help text in or you have an adult help you out. But we're going to be answering some of your questions on the air today about seals and sea lions and animal training. Do you have pets at home? Do they know how to do certain fun activities for you? I taught my cat how to sit. That took a little bit of effort and a lot of patience. But these are things that we can talk about is how we have our animals work together with us so that we can use that space safely with them when we're feeding them or when we're in our, we're, we have health care that we have to provide for them. So just like you or I sometimes have to go to the doctor, the animals sometimes have to go to the doctor too. Well, let's see if we can catch up with Captain Joe and see what Captain Joe is doing today. Hello everyone, welcome to our seal and sea lion habitat. Today we're here to investigate the differences between these two very special marine mammals. Let's go ahead and take a closer look. Okay, so we're going to bring up some very special animals. Now we're gonna use the seals and the sea lions as our animal ambassadors to talk about training. But that doesn't mean those are the only animals that are trained here at the Aquarium of the Pacific. A lot of the animals are. The sharks, a number of the fish are. Even when the divers are in the water and they are feeding animals, they have to train the animals to feed in a specific spot. So we're gonna learn a lot about how we use this training process we call positive reinforcement. So whenever we have an animal that's doing an activity we want them to do, we reinforce it by giving them food. It's just like if you did something great and I gave you a piece of candy. So those are the things that we do. It's called positive reinforcement when you reward the behavior you want. Now the fish that are being fed in some of the really big exhibits, we started with Blue Cavern here as our webcam to start the program with. There's a lot of space in that exhibit. Just like our tropical reef habitat, there's a lot of space in there too. And we can train the fish to feed in specific spots so that they know what food there is supposed to be theirs and the divers know who's eating what. So there's a lot of information that we're gonna have to talk about today. Now. Let's probably compare some seals and sea lions real quick. Okay, here's my harbor seal friend. What do you notice? Now remember, you can text in questions, you can also text in your observations, and Emily will be able, uh, able to help read those off for us. What is something you noticed about a harbor seal? One of the first things I noticed is that they have spots. They're not all one color. Our harbor seals here are a little bit different. They're a little darker in their coloring. They have more dark spots than the light spots, but that's an interesting comparison too. The Pacific harbor seals, like ours here in California, have a lot more dark spots on their body. And the Atlantic harbor seals, which is one of ours here, Ellie, yeah, I think it's Ellie. She's an Atlantic harbor seal. She has a lot more light coloring, kind of like our stuffed animal friend. Well, what else do you notice about a harbor seal? Hmm. Well, they have a face, they have eyes like we do. They have flippers on their sides and in the back. Not really much of a long tail, but they have a pretty interesting body. They're really good at swimming. They kind of have this torpedo or almost bowling pin shaped body. Now we talked about penguins in our last class. They kind of have this figure eight bowling pin body too. It's a pretty common thing for animals in the ocean to have this kind of footballish shape. Now, Alex made some great observations. Alex noticed the spots too. Good job, Alex. What else can we notice about our harbor seals? Hmm. Well, let's try comparing to a sea lion. Maybe that'll help us come up with some observations. Where's my sea lion friend? Let's see, I gotta find our sea lion friend. <laughs> There's a sea lion friend. Okay. Now these are not to scale. It'd be great if it were. But what did you notice about this one? Something is very different. Alex noticed the spots last time. Do we see any spots this time? Hmm, I don't really see any spots on this animal. Interesting. This one has what looks like a little bit longer flippers in the front. What else do we notice about our 
sea lion friend. Though this one does have a face, eyes, and a nose, and a mouth, just like our seal does. So that's something that's the same. What else could be different between our two animal friends? Oh, this one has a little bit longer tail. Now I see Emily is looking at our computer. She must be writing some stuff down. So I'll make sure to share your questions and observations too. The other thing I kind of notice are these. What are these? They're ears, you're right. Does that mean the harbor seal doesn't have ears? Turns out they have ears too, that we just can't see them because all of their ear parts are on the inside. Now, great, somebody recognize there's a dark brown color on our sea lions. California sea lions and most sea lions are this all dark brown color. Harbor seals have the, have the lark, uh, light and dark spots on their bodies. So when you're out in the water, you might recognize a seal and a sea lion locally here in Southern California simply by the color. But in some cases, seals can be really big too, and they might confuse us for sea lions. And then, then we sometimes call some sea lion types of animals fur seals. Hmm. Well, common names just kind of describe the animal, but their scientific names are really a lot more accurate. Now, the Guadalupe fur seal, for example, is a type of sea lion that has really, really long flippers. That's how we recognize that it's a Guadalupe fur seal, but it's a type of sea lion, even though we call it a seal. Seals and sea lions all belong to this group called the pinnipeds. That means feather or fin-footed. Now, the pinnipeds include seal, sea lions, and the walrus. The walrus is the only currently living member of that branch of the family. So there's only one walrus species, but there's a lot of different seals and sea lions. All right. Great observations from our young viewers and viewers of all ages. Doesn't matter. You don't have to be young. Genevieve is looking at the ears. Genevieve found ears too. Good job. And Alex has seen that their bodies are a little bit different shape. Well, that's really good. Let's do a little bit more investigation with Joe. Joe will probably help us review all these observations we were making in the studio and probably give us a few more things to learn about our seals and sea lions. Let's check back in with Captain Joe. For one thing, if you take a look at this sea lion, you can see that he has big flippers both in front and back. For another difference, look closely at the sides of the head. You see those? Those are ear flaps. Sea lions have external ear flaps just like us. Now take a look at this harbor seal, and do you see any differences? Little stubby flippers in the back, little stubby paws in the front, and look at the side of its head. No ear flaps. Seals do have ears, but the only thing they have to show for it on the outside are these little holes on the side of their head. No ear flaps for them. Great job, everyone. Was there anything else that you noticed in the video? Those are some very adorable animals. Seals and sea lions are marine mammals. They live in the ocean, which means they're a marine animal, and they're mammals just like us. Do we all remember what makes a mammal a mammal? Let's quickly review how that works. <sighs> oh, that's the first one. We breathe air. We have lungs. So mammals all breathe air, even the ones that live in the ocean. What's another thing that we have that makes us unique to other groups of animals? So we breathe air. Hmm. We are warm blooded. Now I'm wearing my vest because the air conditioning turns on in our studio to keep things cool. So it gets sometimes a little chilly in here, but my body tries to stay the same temperature all the time. If our bodies were a different temperature, we're not well, we're kind of sick with something. Like if we get too cold, our bodies aren't happy. They try to warm us back up. If we're too warm, our bodies aren't happy. We try to cool back down. So we're warm blooded. We try to stay the same temperature all the time. Well, what else makes us a mammal? We breathe air, we're warm blooded, Ah, our babies. We have live babies that are born awake and alive. Other animals lay eggs or the baby is attached to a yolk sac. So that's very different for other animals. We have live young. And when the babies are babies, they nurse from mom. So the moms make milk for the baby to eat. So those are some really good mammal characteristics. And all the marine mammals share that too. Now, a couple more questions came in, so let's make sure we get to some of those before we check back in with whatever Captain Joe's up to now. All right, Genevieve is asking, do walrus males and females have tusks? That's a good question. I, for the longest time, thought only the males had tusks. Maybe Emily can help me. I thought it was 
all walruses did, but we're going to do a quick double check because sometimes we hear things when we're younger and that information sticks with us and we're not really sure if it's truly correct or if it was just a information that we heard so often that we think it's correct. So Emily's double checking for me, but I'm pretty sure they all do. All right. Yes. Emily just confirmed both the females and the males do have tusks. I've seen pictures with a lot of walruses out on a beach and they all had tusks, but we wanted to make sure that was correct. All right. So Genevieve, they do all have tusks and the seals and sea lions don't have tusks. Good observation. They have big teeth. They have pointy teeth. So here's a sea lion replica skull. They do have big pointy teeth, but they don't have tusks. Now, Audrey's asking, does a sea lion have a family? They do have families, but they don't really stay in a family unit like a pod of dolphins will. So the mom will have their babies on a certain area of the beach, a rookery, and when they grow up to a point where they don't have to feed from mom anymore, they don't have to nurse mom's milk, they'll often kind of part ways with mom and they go off on their own. They still might go back to the same beach that they were born on year after year, but they don't really live together as a family unit. They also don't really hunt together as a unit either, like uh, dolphins or pack of wolves will hunt together as one group. Now, Akali, I think I'm pronouncing that right, I hope I am, uh, is asking, are sea lions invertebrates? Well, what is an invertebrate? Let's break that word down a little bit. In that word, invertebrate, we have the word vertebra. So our backbone, can you feel your backbone? Might have to lean over a little bit. Yep, that bone structure in our back, that's our spine. Now, animals that are vertebrates have a spine or an internal skeleton. There are a few types of vertebrates that are a little different, that they have parts of what our backbone contains, but they don't have any skeleton. So vertebrates have that skeleton. Well, do you think seals and sea lions have skeletons? Yeah, they have bones inside their body. Other animals only have cartilage skeletons, like sharks. We'll talk about sharks in our next class. But seals and sea lions have bone and cartilage, making them a vertebrate, not an invertebrate. That's a very good question. We should always kind of remember more characteristics about our animals. Now, the interesting thing is, even though we think of most animals that have bones inside their body, most of the animals on the planet are invertebrates or have no bones or no spine or no internal skeleton. So that's a pretty interesting thing that we can talk about in one of our other classes too. We're gonna have another class a little bit later this week. I think it's all about invertebrates. So tune in for that too. All right, let's see what Joe is up to. I'm sure he's been learning a little bit more about seals and sea lions at our exhibit today. All right, cadets. As part of every ocean ranger's training, we must all learn the majestic call of the California sea lion. Ready? Here we go. And now, the harvest seal. Uh, Captain Joe, I don't think we heard the harbor seal call. Why can't we hear it? Well, that is because the harbor seal is stealthy and quiet. Oh, uh, okay. Well, that makes sense. Can you tell us more about their habitats, though? Well, of course. All right, so let's check in about their habitats, too. Sea lions tend to hunt in shallow water, both out in the open and in our local kelp forests, eating many different kinds of fish and squid, and they can hold their breath for about nine minutes. Now seals, on the other hand, although they enjoy those fish and squid, they also enjoy crab and shrimp on the bottom of the ocean floor, and they can hold their breaths for up to 30 minutes. Were you watching those animals while they were in the ocean? Did we remember all the observations we made about seals and sea lions? I saw the little ear flaps on the sea lions, but just the, the hole or where the ear would be for the seals and the spots and colors we noticed earlier too. Now, did you hear Captain Joe's sea lion call? Did you want to try doing a sea lion call too? It kind of sounds like a bark or a roar. Arr, 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 just like that. But harbor seals... He said they're stealthy and quiet. They are very stealthy. There's a lot of people that are out in the ocean that sometimes are surprised by a harbor seal popping up right next to them because they don't make a lot of noise. They're not barking or roaring, but they do make some other noises like 
the raspberry noise. <laughs> Sometimes that too. They grunt and they growl, but they're really pretty quiet compared to a sea lion. A lot of people say, you know, if you can hear a seal, you're probably too close. And that's very true. If you can hear them really well, you're definitely too close. Now, I think Genevieve was asking, are they playful? When we were watching the video of the animals in the water, did it look like they were playing together? Kind of does. We describe it as play, and they are very curious. They are very interested in what's going on around them. But they don't really play the same way that we do. But we do have projects and puzzles and games for them to help keep their minds active. Because just like you or I, if we're at home too long and we don't have anything to do, we get a little restless and our brains get a little bored. And sometimes we get a little bit into trouble when that happens. Well, the seals and sea lions, they, when they're out in the ocean, they can go out into the ocean and they can solve the puzzles that nature provides for them. But here at the Aquarium of the Pacific, we have to give them those puzzles so that they have something to work on while they're here. So we put toys in the exhibit to help give them something to do. Or we use what we call enrichment, which is them having activities or puzzles to work on. Now, sometimes our staff are in the tunnel and do training behaviors with them while they're standing in the tunnel, which is very different than normal. Normally, they're up on the deck and they're talking to the animals while they're up inside the exhibit. Now, we'll take a look at Joe and Jimmy inside the exhibit during a training feed a little bit later. But we have a couple more questions that just came in. So let's answer some of these. Okay, how do you know if they're a girl or a boy? Well, for sea lions, there's really one way. Size is a big determining factor on sea lions. The other thing you can tell if they can only see their head is that the boys get this big crest on the top of their head. This is the sagittal crest. And their skull gets this big bump. And because of that, you can tell that if they have that big bump on their head, they're a big male. Sea lion females don't have this and they're much smaller. So sea lions, it's a little easier to tell. The harbor seal, it's pretty tough because they're almost the same size. They're very, very similar in size and they don't have the sagittal crest. So true seals are much tougher to tell if they're male or female than sea lions. Okay, uh, Ikali is asking, are sea lions endangered? There are a few species of sea lions in the world that are either threatened or endangered. And a lot of it is because of what we call habitat fragmentation or encroachment too. So fragmentation, think of it if you had a pan of brownies and you wanted to fragment the brownies, you kind of take bits out of the middle so then they're no longer touching all each other. It's kind of how it works with habitats. They're either split apart because we build things in the middle or because nature actually breaks things up too. But no longer would they have the same long habitat or size of habitat, it's broken into smaller chunks. Now the other thing is habitat encroachment where we do build closer and closer to these habitats. A lot of people live near the water. We're right here next to the ocean in Long Beach at the Aquarium of the Pacific. It's a very fun place to be. But because of that, we also start taking up some of the habitats of the animals too. And because of that, some of these animals are becoming endangered because their beaches that they would normally go to, to have babies or to even find a mate, are being used by people. So in some cases, we took over their space. In other cases, the animals don't have good adaptations or good abilities to continue surviving in their habitat. That's also just part of nature. Sometimes animals are not well suited for an environment and they won't survive very well. But in most cases with, har with seals and sea lions right now, it was because of human activity. And they used to be hunted quite a bit for their fur. Well, they're protected now. So the 1970s had the Marine Mammal Protection Act and the Endangered Species Act also helps protect these animals too. So right now, the Marine Mammal Protection Act means we are not allowed to get within 50 feet of any of the seals or sea lions. That helps make sure that they have their space and we have our space and we can observe them and watch them, but we aren't supposed to interact with them. So if you ever see a seal or a sea lion at the beach, you really need to stay pretty far away from them. And that's so they don't feel like they're threatened by us and they can actually be pretty dangerous to be around if you don't know what you're doing like our mammal trainers do here inside the aquarium. But even our mammal trainers wouldn't go over to the beach and try and hang out with a sea lion. They only work with our animals here inside the aquarium. Well, let's check in with Joe again and see what else we're going to learn and talk about about seals and sea lions and animal training. Okay, Captain Joe, what's it like caring for seals and sea lions here at the aquarium? 
What a great question. I know quite a few people that work here with our seals and sea lions. Let's go ahead and go ask them. What do you say? All right, I like this plan. Okay, so Captain Joe is right next to the seal and sea lion habitat. You saw them swimming around behind him. So let's give him a quick minute to run upstairs and go check in with Jimmy while he's in the exhibit. Now, our seals and sea lions are trained four times a day. And during that training session, they are also fed. Remember that positive reinforcement training we talked about? We use their food to reinforce the good behavior they do. Now, if they don't do the right behavior, that doesn't mean we don't feed them. That's probably not very nice. In fact, it isn't very nice. So we, we still give them their food, but we sometimes have to change how much we give them because of how they're behaving during a training session. So if an animal does something really good, it's called a jackpot. Now, Jimmy's going to explain what a jackpot is in a little bit, but we use that amount of food to really reward them and make sure that they're doing the behaviors we need. So the reasons we train animals here are that enrichment, remember keeping their brains active, making sure that they're doing stuff. We train them so that we can make sure that they're healthy and it gets them a little bit of exercise. Just like you or I need a little bit of exercise every day, the animals need a little bit of exercise every day too. All right. Well, I bet Joe has run upstairs to check in with Jimmy during the feeding session. Let's see what they're up to. Hello boys and girls, welcome back. I'm here with my friend Jimmy. He's a mammologist taking care of our sea lions, seals, and also our sea otters. And we have our special guest Parker here with us today. Good morning everybody. Hi. Wave hi Parker. Say hi. Good boy. We're going to talk about our training. We train these animals so that we, they can participate in their health care. We can ask them to open their mouths. We can target and move our fingers over their eyes when we give them eye drops. We also want them to be physically fit and want them to think about the behavior. So when Parker sticks out his tongue at everybody like he's getting ready to do, tongue, tongue, good. Yeah. I say good. And then he gets excited because he knows he's going to get a fish. That's herring. Then we have capelin and we also have squid. So he's very focused on the bucket because he knows he's going to get what we call a reward. If you guys do something good, you may get a quarter. Um, if Joe's going to be good, I might buy him lunch after we do this. Yeah. Thing. But the training is really important because we want him to be comfortable with us. Good. Good boy. So there's a variety of behaviors that we do train him. Salute. Good. Good boy. So we ask for the behavior either verbally with our mouths or we do a hand signal. And so Joe's going to do a hand signal. He's going to get his right uh, hand and point to his ear. Look at Parker and point to your ear. Good boy. All right. And now if you get your right hand and shake your index finger back and forth, he's going to do a no. Do a Parker. Good. Good boy. Now stick your right thumb out. Good. good boy. Good. So now look over there and give, give him a kiss. Give Joe a kiss. Give Joe a kiss. Hey, come here. Parker, give me a big smooch. Thanks, good. buddy. Good boy. Good job. So that's just a little bit about our training and having him sit here for the whole time that we're filming is a really good experience for him. And now, since he did so good, I'm going to have him um, lift up. Do you want to wave bye or wave? Say bye. You want to dance? Dance for him a little bit. Do some behaviors. Nice. Lift it up. Lift it up. Good boy. Now we're going to do a jackpot, meaning he did everything I wanted him to do. So I'm going to go back in the exhibit and give him all of his fish all at once. Awesome. Have a good day. See you later. Thank you so much, Jimmy. You're Thank welcome. you so much, bye. Parker. Say bye. Good boy. Let's go. What an awesome time with Parker, our California sea lion. Boys and girls, we're going to send it back to you at the studio. Well, thanks, Captain Joe. Did you hear what a jackpot was? We gave Parker all the food all at once for doing a lot of behaviors all together in that sequence. Well, don't forget, we still have some time left. You can text in your questions at 562-286-1838. Now, that training process we use, remember, for their health care, for their activity level, and for their brains. When we need to, we can do a blood draw. We can put in eye drops for Parker. We can also make sure that they're healthy in general, if they're able to move around their exhibit, if they're eating like they're supposed to, that tells us a lot about the animals. All right, we had a couple of questions come in while we were working with Parker. One of the observations I made about Parker was that big bump. Do you remember we talked about the sagittal crest on their head? That was a big forehead on Parker, meaning he's a large male. He's a pretty big guy. He gets up to 800 pounds during the summer, which is a good lead in for Brexton's question, how big are seals? Now, Parker is a sea lion, but how big do the seals get? Well, harbor seals, the, the males are about five to six feet, and they're about 120 to 300 pounds. So they're almost like me. Harbor seal females are also about five foot, but about 100 to 190 pounds. 
So a five foot person that's about 100 pounds, that's a smaller harbor seal. Now the smallest of all the seals is the Baikal seal, and it's only about three feet long. That's not very big at all. That's almost like our little sea lion uh, plush animal friend we have here. So this is about the size of a Baikal seal. That's not too big compared to an elephant seal, which can be up to 20 feet long, and they're thousands of pounds. So seals really are the biggest of all the pinnipeds, and they can be pretty small too. Okay, a colleague is asking, uh, how fast can the sea lions swim? They swim about 13 miles an hour if they're sprinting. They might cruise or just gently swim their way through three to five miles an hour, kind of like a normal walk for a person. But if they need to sprint, they can go up to 13 miles an hour or sometimes faster. I've seen them ke uh, keep up with some dolphins every once in a while. So they're pretty quick. Now, the lifespan of a sea lion was another question. How long do these animals live? Well, in their normal habitat, they might live 15 to 20 years. But here at the Aquarium of the Pacific, because we have healthcare right here on site, they're constantly monitored, they're fed the best food we can possibly provide, and we train them so well to be participants in their healthcare, they might live 25 to 30 years. That's a pretty good difference compared to n natural habitat versus under human care. So we can do a lot for our animals, but we haven't really talked about the healthcare of animals yet. Hmm. Let's check in with our Molina Animal Care Center, our on-site vet hospital, and see what they're going to talk to us about in terms of animal health care today. Welcome, Ocean Rangers. My name is Shara Seals, and I'm here at the Molina Animal Care Center. This is our veterinary hospital for all of our animals here at the Aquarium of the Pacific. Today, I'm going to show you our pharmacy. We have a lot of the same medications that humans can get. Sometimes they might be in a pill. Sometimes they may even be liquid or drops. Today, we're gonna refill some eye drops for one of our animals. Here, let me show you. This is a prescription for Parker. He's one of our sea lions. Sometimes the animals may not wanna take their medications. So to make it easier, we train them. That way they can get a fish for reinforcement and we make it really positive and fun for them. ways to give our animals their medicine. If the medicine needs to go on the inside, then sometimes we can hide it in their food, like for fish and sharks. Sometimes we need to put it on the outside. So we can apply this ointment to a sea turtle shell to help it heal. Thanks for joining me, boys and girls. Now you know how our animals get their medicine. We'll see you next time. Thanks, Shara. Well, I hope you learned a lot about how we take care of the animals, too. And I know a number of people that don't like getting eye drops, like my friend Katie. Can you imagine trying to give eye drops to an 800-pound sea lion if they don't want you to? That would be very tough. Well, the training is so important, it helps develop that relationship with the animals. It helps the animals be healthier here with us, too. Now, a great question came in about the training. How long does it take to learn a new behavior? It really depends on the type of behavior. Now, one of the things you might have noticed in the videos is that we can use our arm as a target pole. It really all it is is helping the animal point to something with their nose. So we start with a pole with a little float on the end of it, and so we can have them follow the pole if we need to, or we can just use our arm to have them point to our hand so that we can observe them or make sure that we can check them out. Like when Parker was getting eye drops, he stuck his nose right on somebody's hand so that he could sit still, get those eye drops, and then he was rewarded for his behavior. That could take some time if an animal has never had to target that way before. And in some cases, they might learn a behavior in a few days if it's something that's recognizable or even easy. And in some cases, it might take a month or so to really learn a new behavior. It kind of depends on the complexity or how tough it is for them to learn that thing. And sometimes it takes a little while and they're just being not as successful as we would like. And then suddenly, light bulb goes off and they do the behavior perfectly. 
So training is a really interesting process, and it's a complex way that we interact with our animals, but it's a really rewarding and beneficial way that we can work with them too. Well, I want to thank you all so much for checking in with us and learning about animal training here with Captain Joe and I today on our Aquarium Online Academy. If you have more questions and you're not watching live, don't worry, you can still talk to us. You can email us at live at lbaop.org. Email your questions into our uh, online academy and we'll have our staff help answer them for you. All right. Well, thank you all for joining us today. I appreciate you learning and tune in for more amazing animal information that we're going to be learning about sharks in our next program at 11 o'clock today. Thank you, everybody. and Enjoy your Tuesday afternoon.